Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Um, it's been a little while since I've given you guys an update. Um, for the most part, I've just been super busy um, filming and getting videos for my DIY channel. That's the channel that kind of, you know, pays the bills. <laughs> and I've been busy doing that one. I'm trying to just kind of work ahead and have content, enough content that I can um, upload while I recover or on maternity leave. Um, you're going to have to bear with me because <laughs> I'm getting more and more uncomfortable. It's getting a little bit harder for me to catch my breath and don't kid yourselves I'm wearing a really nice cute shirt right now but I am totally wearing pajama shorts <laughs> it's a uh, business on the top party at the bottom because I just wearing jeans or even my leggings are getting tight and uncomfortable and I, I just can't so right now I'm just chilling in my PJ shorts and that's pretty much what you'll see me in all day long um, unless I'm gonna go out of the house or you know film that's when I kind of get dolled up because otherwise I have zero energy for that today is Friday January 21st which means that on Monday I will be 35 weeks along so that puts me at four weeks away exactly from when I'm gonna be induced that's where we're at so my um, my video today is actually just kind of giving you guys my checklist of what I need to do or in case you guys need ideas of what you should do if you are expecting um, what you need to get off your checklist like now before the baby comes um, there's so many things to do that are not gonna fit in this list but this is just like a general idea of what I need to get done um, before time just flies and then I'm gonna be left saying uh, <laughs> I should have had this ready So from now until the baby's here, I have about four weeks. So in that time, I have my list of to-do things. One of the first things that I'm going to do is take out all the baby clothes that I bought from zero to three months, including blankets, swaddlers, burp cloths, etc., etc. Anything that's going to physically touch the baby, um, you know, when he's born. I'm going to go ahead and wash all of that, make sure it's nice and clean. Okay. Oh, look. <laughs> so cute. So cute. And just so you guys know, Milani has been super excited to be involved in everything that has to do with the baby. That includes shopping for the baby and obviously here helping me with anything that has to do. So I'm actually so excited for her. And another thing that I was super excited about was um, setting up the crib. So that's definitely something I want to have ready, which you guys can see in the background here. here I already do. One of the biggest issues that we had, um, had and now have again in this house is that there's five of us, there's only three rooms. We kind of converted our old dining room into Milani's bedroom, which worked out perfectly because now we have like four bedrooms, <laughs> but we're out of space. So as far as setting up a nursery goes, this is as far as we're getting because we don't have an actual nursery. We're sharing our bedroom, which is fine. And we decided to get a mini crib instead of using the full crib that we have. And my in-laws actually bought, bought this for us for the baby shower. I just cleared out some drawers in here and then there's like a closet out this door and to the right. Um, it's like a linen closet, I guess and I just made some room for like some like baby stuff like maybe the whole part like the bottom part of it and then also in our closet it's a very very small I wouldn't even walk call it a walk-in closet I would call it like a step-in closet and that's it um so I just cleared out some of my stuff and you know put baby stuff in there too like baby clothes our nursery is set up another thing that I've been trying to do in the house is actually just declutter or unclutter certain spaces I'm just trying to do like some deep cleaning as much as I can get rid of stuff that we don't need um, deep clean the house and then also deep clean the car because my car is always the one that gets the dirtiest because I'm always the one that has everybody in the car at once actually my older son's driving now so they have their car that they drive um, but like crumbs and trash and just all the stuff always goes in my car so we actually already did that this past weekend my boys actually um, cleaned out my car and you know just 
really nice and deep cleaned it and then that's what I'm gonna do with the house as well just to have it ready that way I don't have to worry about it when the baby's here and like having to look at all these messes that I can't I don't really want to worry about I don't want to worry about it so deep clean house deep clean car So on the subject of deep cleaning the car, I also want to make sure that I set up the car seat and we actually also got a really neat um, camera. Now, instead of using like the mirrors, you know, that where you can see your baby, we were gifted a camera that we can set up. So I actually already did that. We set up the car seat. I just wanted to make sure it was nice and good in there and, um, you know again with like the space it's <laughs> it's we have an SUV but it's still getting a little cramped in there but all of that is set up ready to go that way we don't have to worry about it in case you know if I decide to go into labor myself then everything's in there and we don't have to worry about it later So one thing that I had been stalling on was packing a diaper bag and packing a hospital bag. Um, I wasn't sure really what to take. I was trying to remember what I took when I had Milani. Um, I feel like I took more stuff than I needed to. And then at the hospital, they just, they do give you certain things. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to kind of pack the bare minimum. So definitely want to have those ready um, for myself and for the baby. Next on my checklist is just having all of like my feeding stuff cleaned, ready, sanitized. Um, with Milani, if you guys have been following me since she was born, I don't know if you'd remember or not, but I had a really hard time with her taking a bottle, taking a pacifier, taking anything other than these, and that was so hard on me. I do actually have a breast pump from when I had her, um, but I actually ordered another one. So if you guys don't know about the breast pumps, um, usually it's covered under your insurance plan. They do have a lot like nicer ones. There, there's one that I wanted that was like hands-free, so you basically just put it in your bra and you can do whatever you want and you're pumping. Um, but it was really expensive, um, like the copay, even after insurance paid for it. So I just went with like a normal one. I'll show you guys right here. So I don't really have any, um, remarks on this breast pump because I have not received it yet. They're still waiting for my doctor to approve the prescription. But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to encourage the bottle feeding so my husband can help me. Um, so I have like my, my, um, store, like milk storage bags. I have waiting for my pump. We got my bottles and all of that. I got the rack. So I, we have everything ready to go. I just need to clean, sanitize, and we're good. Oh, so anyways, what I was saying about the breast pump being covered through insurance, um, if you guys didn't know and you were looking for a breast pump, make sure that you, um, I will actually link the link that I used um, down below and you guys can check out the breast pumps that they have there and then you can um, check if you qualify through your insurance to be covered for one. That way you don't have to buy one out of pocket because um, they're pretty expensive. Now that we have the clothes, the nursery, the house cleaned, whatever. Now it's time to get all the baby gear ready. And by baby gear, I mean like the swings, like the strollers and you know, all of that stuff, like the big stuff that you're gonna use. Like I said, um, we didn't buy a lot of that stuff just because we have stuff that we had from Milani. Like we have our swing, we had the little bouncer seat. Although some of the things that we have <laughs> are pink, Minnie Mouse, you know, all that stuff, but it's like, potato potato it does not matter I'm not gonna get new stuff when I already have this perfectly good stuff that she only used for however long um, so everything's up in the attic we're gonna bring it down get it all cleaned um, just what I assume that we're gonna use in the beginning um, because again we're running out of space in this house and uh, yeah <laughs> so I want to make sure that we don't clutter every single little space that we have um, and then I have like the baby carrier that I washed and we have the Daca tots that helped tremendously because Milani was cray cray. I don't even have to tell you guys, but so yeah, just trying to get everything out of the boxes, clean, sanitized, good to go. One thing that we're putting on our checklist is the grooming part of, you know, you know, I definitely want to clean up that area. Not that I haven't throughout this thing, but it's just really, really hard to do. Once the baby's born, I want to make sure that everything's nice and clean. That way we minimize any, it's more of a hygiene thing, you know what I mean? We minimize any 
bacterias and infections, um, not only like after the birth, but like as I'm recovering, there's so many things that go on with like the, you know, I just want to make sure everything's nice and clean and good and <laughs> so that we, we heal as nicely as we can. And then I also think it's funny because um, I have not shaved my legs since before Christmas, I think, and I have zero hair on my legs. That never happens. Usually if I shave, two days later, my, my legs have hair. But right now, I feel like I just shaved and I have not shaved since before Christmas. But I feel like the hair that I'm missing on my legs is going other places, which is really weird. And then also, my hair is beautiful. Like, I can go days without washing it and it looks the same. Um, so yes, definitely want to keep that on my checklist. And then also, my feet. Oh my gosh. My feet have seen better days. They're really swollen right now. I have not been able to do my nails in I don't know how long. Um, so it's time for a little pampering of that also. Just, you know, kind of get them nice and soft and smooth. Because right now, all you hear is crackling static on my blanket when I'm laying down. And that's not, just, just not. So... Um, I don't usually go to salons or I don't usually go anywhere to get my hair or my um, nails done because I don't like spending that money. So we're going to go ahead and do one here at home. One really important thing on my checklist that I have not done, I kind of brought it up, but I haven't really had um, a full on conversation is to have the talk with my partner, my husband, my soulmate my significant other my ride or die my whatever you want to call him um, I had a very difficult time after Milani was born um, I don't know why my voice cracked right there I felt <laughs> um, I had a really hard time after she was born I feel like I had really bad um, postpartum depression which I kind of chalked up to being like baby blues um, I was like postpartum depression I feel like I was an emotional mess. I was not in a good headspace and I spent a lot of time indoors not wanting to go out, not wanting anybody to touch the baby. Um, also I feel because like she was super attached to me like she just wanted to be on me all the time. When she slept if I would put her down she would immediately wake up and just start crying and screaming her head off. Um, so that was really hard because I just felt like it was just me and her like glued together all day long um, and then even after my husband went back to work you know it was kind of hard and then I also feel like I had a little bit of postpartum de not sorry postpartum depression but I also feel like I had some post-traumatic stress um, from previous experiences I had when I had my older boys I was not in a very good relationship then and <laughs> it went through some pretty crappy stuff, especially like right, like after my um, second son was born, like driving myself to the hospital when I was in labor and just, <clears throat> so I was like, I like drove myself to the hospital by myself. I was like in the hospital by myself until pretty much I was like ready to like push. Um, so that was really hard. And then like the, just, you know, stuff throughout that, um, relationship it felt like and on top of that I was going through some legal stuff because of that relationship throughout like the last weeks of my pregnancy and just getting ready for like a like a court date and so all these things were just happening around that time and uh <laughs> I it's I feel so bad because um my husband was actually um, part of my nephews. Who's my nephew's like thirty some years old right now. Um, he was part of the of the um, wedding, of the wet of the groomsman. He was a groomsman for his wedding, and so they had it planned out like the bachelor party. They were gonna go out like wherever for the weekend and stuff. And I was cool. I was fine with it. Obviously, it's my family and stuff. But then, <laughs> when the day came that like maybe a couple of days before he was gonna leave. I threw it like I threw a fit because I just couldn't believe that he was gonna leave me and I just had a baby literally like two weeks before and you know it was just not good like I exploded all these emotions and feelings and thoughts of like um like you don't even care or like um I felt like I was being abandoned 
only because that's kind of what I had felt in the past and <laughs> he ended up not going um which you know so hang on let me get <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and I <laughs> and I told him I said I don't know why but I'm kind of waiting for you to tell me that you're gonna leave me Listen, you're not supposed to get emotional when you're talking about a checklist for him to prepare for your baby. But I feel I feel like I'm always very open with you guys and I'm very vulnerable to you guys as well. Um, so anyways, I think one of the things that I told him, if my mascara starts running, don't even worry about it, guys. Um, I told him um, that I was kind of preparing or thinking like, I'm just waiting for you to leave. Like, I'm waiting for you to leave me or tell me that you don't want to be with me anymore, blah, 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 blah. Or, be, or <clears throat> that I'm not good enough or that my body's disgusting because I just had a baby. I don't know. I had all these things that I just, like, you know, vomited to him. Um, and my, I, you know, he drives me nuts sometimes, but my husband has been one of the most supportive people in my life. Um... And I know he like he would never he lo he just so that's one thing that I have to kind of sit down and talk to him about make sure that we're kind of on the same page of listen these this is kind of what I went through last time I don't know what type of emotions I'm gonna have you know coming around but now that we know kind of why I was feeling the way I was feeling last time maybe we can you know kind of work these things out and then also just kind of divvy up some responsibilities too because I feel like a lot of the times ever like the responsibility does fall on us a hundred percent because we're the one with the boobs and we're the ones with the bond or we're the you know um I think it's not fair <laughs> so we want to make sure that the responsibilities are kind of talked out um you know like if I'm up all night uh, feeding the baby or whatever and yeah, he, we need to kind of take turns and that was another thing. He was a little helpless because Milani wouldn't take a bottle and it's not his fault but I took it out on him <laughs> and so those are kind of things that you have to talk about with your partner. You know kind of like what to expect the next time around. We've already done this once. We kind of can try to work around you know the negative aspects and then also just trying to work in like positive aspects and then also and then try to figure out ways to kind of make our relationship stronger as as well because I mean you got to be honest like when you have a baby or there's a life-changing event like stuff <laughs> you know you get tested a lot and I feel like that's a huge thing and that's why I have it like on my checklist to make sure that him and I sit down and just kind of talk about all these things and not just on my end but also on him like how he's feeling and stuff um because I know like I've had experience before I had my two kids you know and then he came in he became a father figure to them when they were a little bit older not so much in the baby stage and so when Milani came around that's his first rodeo you know um I felt like he didn't know how to do stuff because I've already done it or, you know, I, I didn't really let him learn. Um, I don't know. Not that I didn't let him learn, but it was more of like, well, don't do it like this because this is how you do it. And I didn't let him figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, so that's a really, really important talk because our relationship is the most important in the household because if our relationship breaks, then everything kind of falls on top of the foundation. You know what I mean? Alright, so <laughs> I did not mean to make that emotional, I swear, and <laughs> I'm sorry if I did, but what can I say? I'm 35 weeks pregnant and the hormones are real. Alright, so last but not least, on my checklist, probably the most important thing on my checklist is to rest. Yes, rest, which I've been trying to do it's hard to do because again there's so much going on there's so many things to prepare for and I have two channels a third one that I'm working on actually which is I'm pretty excited about um, but anyway um, I've been trying to film ahead of time I have a ton of DIYs that I've been making and I have to edit and just do all of these things so I'm trying to do that so that at least a week before the baby is born I'm not doing anything and this is the whole point of this checklist is to knock all these things down so that I don't have to worry about it the week before and then hopefully, you know, several weeks after the baby's born. At least for myself and my own mental health is to get at least a week of just, I'm not doing 
nothing. I'm not cooking. I'm not cleaning. I'm not nothing. Just leave me alone. Let me lay down. Let me sleep. Let me eat. Let me do whatever. And we're good. Because I know I have... <laughs> I just got one toddler to sleep on her own and now we're starting over but that's okay that's what it is uh, all right guys so i think that is it on my checklist i hope i didn't make this too like drawn out or long or anything like that i would love to know if you guys have any questions or if you have suggestions of what else i should put on my checklist um any suggestions on what or i what i should or shouldn't put in my baby bag or the diaper bag and then also my hospital bag again i can't remember what I took last time, but I, I know I took way too much. So, um, with that said, that is our um, update for today, and I hope you guys are doing well. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. I think the next videos that I'll be working on, I don't know if they'll be before the baby comes or after the baby comes, but I'll definitely share what's in my diaper bag, what's in my um, hospital bag and then I'm also going to show you guys like some simple solutions for a co-nursery bedroom um, you know very small space solutions organization stuff that you can do if you also have to share a nursery with your baby so I feel like my nose is just running now and then also I'm feeling a little under the weather today so if my eyes are like red and stuff it's not because I was just crying for like five minutes straight here <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm gonna actually say goodbye because I feel like I need to go drink some water and maybe lay down a little bit. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Totally appreciate you guys. And I will hopefully see you on the next one. Hopefully it's not too long from now, okay? Alright, see you guys.